what we're gonna go through and talk about here is gravitational potential energy. Now, gravitational potential energy is, is exactly what it sounds like. It's the potential energy that is the result of, well, gravity. So I guess the question comes up is, what is potential energy? Uh, this is really stored energy. So what I wanna do is look at a situation here to understand how exactly we can store energy in gravity. Because that's a strange concept. It's a little bit abstract. So let's take ground down here and let's put a box on the ground some mass M. I'm gonna take and lift this box. Now I wanna lift the box at some speed, and I don't care what that speed is, at some speed that is constant. I don't want the box to speed up. I simply wanna take the box from here and lift it up higher. So we're gonna lift the box up here. Some total height, H. The box is gonna start and finish at rest. And so I wanna look at the force required to do this going to be a force upward, which we'll simply call F. And a force downward on this box, of course, as always, that is equal to the force by gravity, that is mg. So if I want to lift this box at a constant speed, that means that vertically the sum of all forces is going to have to be equal to zero. So the sum of all forces in the y-axis is going to be equal to zero. That is the force up minus the force down is equal to zero. So it's quick enough to see, or easy enough to see, that the force up has to be equal in magnitude to mg. So we're gonna lift up on this box with some force F over some total displacement, that is a change in position, from a height of zero to some height h. So if I wanna go through and look at the work that we do in lifting this box, there's a force that we have to pull upward with on this box, and a total displacement. Now remember, we can look at work as being defined as F D cosine theta. This is a constant force, so we don't need to get into any fancy math here. We have this force F upward that we know is mg. We have a displacement that is h, because this is going from ground level up to some height h, and the angle between these two, because the force is straight up and the displacement is straight up, is going to be zero. Well, the cosine of zero is one. So ultimately in lifting this box, we've done some work that is equal to mgh. So this is the work required to lift the block. Now it seems strange as we lift this block, the energy has to go somewhere, it's taking energy from us. If I want to lift this block from here to here, maybe I'm lifting weights, that's going to burn calories. We know actual energy is being used up here. All right, we can get into biology and start talking about ATP and whether or not this is an aerobic versus anaerobic process, blah, blah, blah. You already tuned out because I said the word biology. All right, nobody wants to talk about that silliness, but we've done work. So where's the energy go? Does the block store the energy? What's actually happening here? Well, once the block gets up here, we've taken this energy, done work on this block, and we've stored it. That's what potential means. This is stored energy. So we've stored this much energy in lifting this block. And here's the weird thing to think about. We've stored that energy in the gravitational field. What's that mean? Well, simplistically put, we've taken all this energy, mgh, and we've stored it in space, in the emptiness of space between this block and down here, the earth. Assuming I'm not lifting this block somewhere you know, in space, like Mars. In which case this would be Mars or the moon or wherever that kid from fifth period is from. So work, looks out to be MGH. It's a strange idea. But let's flip this around here to a little bit more understandable idea, because this is abstract. We've done work, the energy has been stored in the gravitational field, what the heck is he talking about? Let's turn around and drop this block now, from this height age. I let go of the block from rest, and the block starts to fall. As the block falls, we know it's gonna speed up. And so as the block falls, it's speeding up and it's gonna gain kinetic energy. 
Well, if the block is speeding up, gaining kinetic energy because its velocity is increasing, that energy had to come from somewhere. We've all been paying attention since the sixth grade. We've all learned about the conservation of energy. So the energy has to be coming from somewhere and it's coming from the gravitational field. We stored this energy. We put it away like money in a bank. That energy was stored in this field between the block and the earth or Mars or moon or wherever the kid from fifth period was. And that energy is now gonna turn back into kinetic energy as this block falls downward, speeding up. And so we arrive at this real weird idea of gravitational potential energy. The way we talk about this is gravitational potential energy, which sometimes you'll see people refer to it as GPE. Oftentimes you'll see this referred to as U with a little G next to it. This is gravitational potential energy. Now, why are we using the letter U? Well, in short, it's because this is physics and we wanna make sure that everybody else who hasn't taken physics has no idea what the heck we're talking about. This is actually simple stuff, but we don't want them to know that. So this potential energy is the result of gravity we simply define as MGH. And that is our equation for gravitational potential energy. Now, how this fits in with kinetic energy, how we can transfer energy from potential to kinetic as something falls and mathematically how that all works out, well, that's a situation for another day. So with that being said, that's all for now. <laughs>